Hi guys, so welcome back. It's your girl Daphne Darling, the beautiful, the bold, and it's still me. Thank you so much. We have been away for a month. I was just away to think about life, eh? Machine come But I'm back here. So thank you so much for joining us. I am at a very special place today. I'm not gonna introduce that. I want someone to introduce that for me. But before we do this, you know the drill, guys. Follow us on social media, go to our Instagram, go to our Facebook, go to our YouTube channel, subscribe, share, love, comment. I mean, I'm so beautiful not to comment. It's cool, Evo. It's cool, Evo. It's cool, Evo. We approve of this message. Please. And today I am at um, Gong Road, Nairobi. I'm here and I'm at the Gender Violence Recovery Center at Maliki Heights. And I have two very wasn't the same handsome no gonna be very very handsome, very handsome guys <laughs> and we want to have a conversation generally on the 16 days of activism zero tolerance to gender based violence okay so before that before i let my guests introduce my, ourselves i'm giving you like two minutes guys just what's up your name many may fall what i'm gonna subscribe by sour And guys, we are back, and I want to let my guests introduce themselves and tell us what they do and where we are, because that I'm in my portrait, okay? So we start <laughs> on my right. Yeah, thank you. Hi, hi, viewers. Uh, this is John Chege. You can call me Chess or Chess Chege anywhere. I work at the Gender Violence Recovery Center. I really don't work at the Gender Violence Recovery Center. I am a team player. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I am a team player at GVRC. I don't consider what I do as as work. Uh, I support this great team here uh, in GBV management that is response and uh, prevention. My current role is in resource mobilization and uh, development of, uh, of our programs. And it's so awesome to see you here today to talk your name story. Thank you. Kari Busana. And to my left. Uh, Duff, thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, my name is James Mungai. I have the great pleasure of working with such a great team as the uh, program manager, uh, program officer manager, me, I speak by faith. Yeah. The program officer at uh, Gender Violence Recovery Center, mm -hmm. that is GVRC in short. Um, GVRC is a charitable trust that is linked to the Nairobi Women Hospital. It began uh, close, roughly uh, 20 years ago, in uh, 2001. Mm -hmm. And uh, the mission is to be a center of excellence for the prevention and management of gender-based violence in mm -hmm. Kenya. And our vision is a society free of gender-based violence. So as the number of times I've seen GBV means that that is <laughs> at our core. Um, gender-based violence is what we want to uh, eliminate in Kenya and in Africa and ideally in the world uh, at large. Um, we, have, uh, we offer free medical and psychosocial support in our nine branches, in the nine branches of the Nairobi Women Hospital, okay. which, which are across the five counties, that is Nairobi, Kajiado, Nakuru, Mombasa, and Meru. We have more programs in other places, but I believe we'll get to get more into that to Kendela Yes. Thank you. And uh, just to get back to you, Jemu, I am one person who believes that not everyone is literate. Okay. Tell my audience what gender based violence is because I believe not everyone knows what it is. Uh, yeah, uh, GBV, most, most of the time, what you want to do is that you want to do it. Do it is something that has spread uh, a lot compared to gender based violence. So, I would like to break it down into three parts. So, one, it involves gender. Gender being uh, the ascribed rules and into your power. In your society, in your in your Kenya, in your Kenya, in your your Kenya, in your Kenya, in your Kenya, that that is the side of gender. When it comes to violence, is any form of harm inflicted or threat of harm inflicted upon an individual, both physically, emotionally, uh, psychologically, economically, spiritually? There, there is quite a, a lot that you can get into that. Um, and number four, it has to be the motivation, the main motivation behind the uh, act of violence is the differences that we have in, in rules. For example, I will ntakuchapa kwa sababu wewe ni mwanamke. That should be at the core for it. Ntakuchapa sababu wewe ni mwanamke. Kwa sababu ya? Kwa sababu wewe ni mwanamke. 
and then so the idea to our society the only way we can inflict harm ni kwa termed as gender based violence ni ni takuchapo no matter the example i've given yeah. but ni the uh, words that are used against you does it cause you harm is it influenced by the fact that i believe either a man is more superior than a woman or a woman should be more superior than, than a man any motivation any anything any form of harm any based on that particular pre- premise it is defined as gender based violence so yeah it's even spiritually and um, now that you told me you have nine branches yes yeah. Nine branches meaning this is something we need to curb very fast. Yeah, yeah. So tell me, how bad is gender based violence in Kenya? Yeah, that's, that's a that's a really um tough question because there are so many aspects to that. So first of all, the rise that has occurred because of the pandemic the pandemic that we are in has shown an, a significant increase. Um in uh, in the we using the data that we have. Mm-hmm. From the past, before 2020, we'd see an average of 3,000 survivors mm-hmm. uh, in a year. In 20, in 2020 alone, we had more than 400, uh, more than 4,200 yeah, survivors yeah. seized. That's an average of 300 in uh, yeah, an average of more around than 300, more than 300 in a month. That is ideally one, uh, one or two survivors in a, in a day, and that is on average. So we had days where we had, yeah, it's yeah. crazy, and, and that cuts across. Uh, we at the moment we uh, in that and, and again we're using data that we have at the Gender Discovery Center. The youngest survivor of a form of GBV mm-hmm. is a four-year-old, four days, four day, sorry, four-day-old baby who was sexually defiled by the father, and the oldest uh, is around ninety-six, one hundred and five, one hundred and five, yeah, from where. The youngest survivor of mm-hmm. gender based violence is actually a 4 day old baby who was sexually assaulted by their father and the oldest survivor we have seen at uh, GVRC is actually 105 mm-hmm. who was uh, who was um, gang raped so the situation is dire it is extreme and especially having um, there are so many contributing factors to gender based violence there is the root causes and the contributing factors adding on top the pandemic and how it destabilized uh, structures and isn't equal whatever was set uh and you were in a prevent uh, gender based violence to increase um covid-19 destroyed most of those structures so it was definitely a worse time to experience gender based violence so the situation ma'am is quite uh, gruesome yeah. yeah you told me let's let me ask you talked about survivors. Yeah. Let me ask you, what is the average number of people who are affected with gender based violence? What survivors are those who don't survive? Um looking at if, if we again I would uh I'd be more confident looking at the uh data that we have at gender based violence. Mm-hmm. So on average we can say at least um one in every three uh women has experienced one form of gender based violence in their whole lifetime again uh, this is extrapolating from the data that we have and for men uh, definitely because of uh, one some other factors like one the fact that they do not report and two uh, the fact that they are more likely they are less likely to experience gender based violence than than mm-hmm. women we put it another average of one to around seven uh, men or boy anyone who is uh, categorized as a male has experienced gender based violence in their lifetime so ideally if you are in a room of 10 people at least 3 have experienced gender based violence mm-hmm. at least once in their whole lifetime yeah i think maybe also what what james is saying is uh, you know that is what is reported eh? yeah mm-hmm. but the situation is much worse and remember there is a tendency to report sexual or severe physical mm-hmm. yeah you know being beaten severely severely yeah or or sexual but you know like he explained there are so many other types of gender based violence that people go through 
rarely would people uh, report uh, psychological abuse. Yeah. Rarely, yeah. Would, yeah, rarely would people report uh, economic abuse, which are still forms of uh, uh, gender based violence. Yeah. And remember, the numbers we are talking about is what has been reported. But there is a lot that, has that happens been. that has not been reported. There is a lot of tolerance at the household level. Yeah. Like, Dona Pula Slabs, Kinya na Yamada, you know. You see, and then remember, GBV becomes worse because it extends to child abuse. You know, so violence against children is included in the broader spectrum of gender based violence. So, who speaks on behalf of the children? The child will depend on somebody to report on on their behalf. So, there is a lot of all that those types of abuse that. We do not catch or we do not get to know that uh, it's, it's happening. Like he said, COVID has made things worse because people are mostly locked together. It is a time when you're going to go back now, going to Ghana. Like since 10 years, we can come and say, like, for let's say a week. But now we have to stay with somebody, the job is gone. It's there, there's too much pressure adding to it, there's too much expectation that it's not being met. So in such situations, remember the underlying of gender-based violence is abuse of power. Yeah. Somebody in a position of power taking advantage of, 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 of the other one. Yeah, and remember when something is done to you as death without your consent. Even if you let it happen, but death without your consent, and automatically that becomes TBB. So the situation with in our Kamoto, what we are seeing, ni moshi kidogo to but yeah. down, it's burning. Money. Yeah, like 90% of the real situation we are not really able to Quantify. What we can see and what is being reported is probably about them. So on the aspect of uh, introducing men, you've said uh, one to seven men have encountered this violence. Tell me, Chess, mm -hmm. the voice of men on the gender-based violence issue, because men are not that vocal, mm -hmm. but we get at a point of time in Africa, we have to expose that men are being exploited, men are being mistreated, men are being abused. Talk to us. Yeah, yeah, it is true. You know, when you talk about gender-based violence, sometimes uh, the focus is more on women mm -hmm. and girls. Because uh, statistics put it like, let's say, 90% of perpetrators are actually men. Okay. But uh, the truth is, uh, men also suffer GBV. And when you talk about GBV uh, in terms of how to address it, then you have to look at it in terms of uh, the role that also men play in this. Because even to prevent it, to prevent violence against women and girls, then you have to bring men on board. But also men do suffer uh, gender-based violence, like uh, especially now in recent times, because you know there's been a lot of uh, efforts and focus in preventing violence against women and girls, but not enough spotlight has been given to men. And a lot of men are going through mental health issues as a result of gender-based violence, mm -hmm. a lot of psychological abuse. Uh, one being that uh, somebody may feel that in a relationship or in a home setup you are not man enough. That being directed to somebody now and again. See you in an Elkulan. Do you know what you're saying? When you're a man, you're a man. When you're a man, you're a man. When you're a man, you're a man. Do you know what that does for a man? It completely attacks the, the self-esteem, like being compared and being f made to feel like you are a lesser man. <laughs> but I mean, shouldn't you compare you guys? No, it's wrong. Okay. Because the moment you attack the person's self-esteem, make them feel like they are not man enough, or they are not, you know, they are not what the salt of being called a man. Automatically, that is based on the agenda. Based on the expectations, yeah, based on the expectation problems. Problems, that, yeah. So automatically, that is the biggest point, uh, point that also men go through. For example, you are not in a position to provide for your people and your family as much as, as you need to because of what has happened and these other pressures. Then when this comparison is thrown on your face and it attacks your self-esteem, then this pushes men to mental health issues. This is a form of gender-based violence because it attacks their, the psychological part of it. Of, you know, it is psychological abuse, classical. Even if there is no physical violence, but that is even worse. Because at the end of the day, when this person is pushed and pushed to the last point, the they get to the wall. Then what happens is, you know, they retaliate again in, the, in a more violent way. That's why you find that somebody has beaten somebody, has stabbed somebody. You know, we so. say we, we say force. 
given is force received. Yes, something like that. And this happens because men, unlike women, men don't have places to vent. No, you don't vent alone. Who told you guys to go to vent in the salon? We know. We know. We know. Like we actually don't vent in the salon. We vent at our best friend's place. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. You have your best friend's place. But for women, opening up is more easy. Yeah. Yes. You know, you can open up in a salon. You can open up to a total uh, stranger, like a lady you've just met five minutes ago, yes. and you're already opening out your heart, which is a good thing. Yeah. But for men, I can even hang out with James, but I'll not tell James what I'm going to. But we, I feel like that is part and parcel of you to blame. No, not really to 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 blame, mm -hmm. but you see the way. Okay, men, we have a lot to unlearn. No, you it's, have toxic masculinity. No, but it's you see, toxic. It's mm -hmm. no one is ever born with toxic masculinity. No, no, no. you learn. You come to a society that, again, as we've spoken True, about, yes. zero rules and young Yeah. So you are cultured into that toxic masculinity. Yeah. So it, it is way harder for a man to, because you, you do not have only have to learn something new, you have to unlearn. And learn. Learn. Now for men, yeah, for yeah, men yeah. it's deconstruction it's, yeah. of what we've known as gender roles. It's deconstructing the whole idea. Like, yeah. And for most men, sometimes they'd rather handle it inside. Like I was telling you, I can hang out with James, but I may not be able to tell James what I'm going through. Yeah. You get? Mm -hmm. And sometimes that is what now leads even, even to more violence. Men need to unlearn a lot of things mm -hmm. and, and figure out that it is safe to speak. It is safe to come out and talk about what you are going through. Because the moment you paint it up, it will reach boiling point and then it will dip. And these effects will go to the people closest to you. Right. Men also undergo, uh, even at GVRC, James can tell you, we've seen sexual abuse yeah, of yeah. men. You see this road, Gong Road, up there, there are several clubs. Like I remember a case, I think, yeah, not very long ago, a taxi driver um, requested online by a group of ladies who are hanging out, club hopping, from club to club, to play a gay joint. Who sit down and watch it run, to talk to So I came to them. Then, Baga Kapo offered, I think a can or something, he doesn't remember very well. But he woke up somewhere in Karen, who woke up soon, totally naked, very wet. So he comes home, got him. Yeah. That's the step of the manager. It's a really, uh, yeah. Yeah, so that's classical sexual abuse, you know. And uh, incidences of nowadays, uh, even if it's robbery, what we have seen, what we were seeing as, as a trend, robberies are being accompanied by sexual violence. Yes. They don't just rob your your, star, your plasma TV and household. Mm -hmm. And this sexual violence extends now. There From, is even so. Yeah. You you see, they rape your wife and then they rape you. Mm -hmm. They also defend your children. Yeah. So it comes uh, robbery plus sexual abuse including of men. So what does that do to you as a man that you've been raped in the presence of your wife and they have also raped? That breaks you. Your, uh, totally breaks a man. So men also go through a lot and there are also men who are going through a lot of, uh, may not be severe physical, but the environment is very toxic in terms of a relationship. They don't know how to communicate. There is no communication. They can't last three lines. Uh, without it getting fired up. You know your matusi, matusi, matusi. Na hii matusi mara mingi is, what the worst thing you can do to a man is demean or diminish his yeah. value. You, you see? Na kwanza matusi ya bedroom do you know she can't? You know, you know a lady knows where to hurt a man and you want to make it go so, go so bad, go so bad issues. Bad issues. So you find that they go through a lot of that. We have men, men groups. We are doing men engagement sessions. Yeah, the things that come out is, uh, you know, it may look something small, but it is not small. When a man is exiled from the bedroom, do you know how many men sleep in the sitting room or on the floor? Or they sleep on the same bed, but at the edge. Then there is, there is no even sexual activity with the partner. That kind of denial. And then, is, you know, they don't know how to communicate. Sometimes it beats me to get how young people think. Because we have a very vibrant, I think you've seen them, yeah, even team, our, yeah. our team, our interns, our mm -hmm. staff. Then I, I kind of feel like, if I was joking, I was telling him, is it that I am very old or I just I don't understand? <laughs> what did you understand? 
you know, the way the way young people work, mm -hmm. the way they think, the way they do their things, the way they make their decisions, even the way they respond to some situations is completely different. Yes. Then that means we have we have we have to repackage everything with the current situation. How exactly are we going to help this young man now? Not exactly what we used to do in like yeah. Nigeria. I'd sit down, let's have a dialogue. That may not work. Because the way they see a chick and the decisions they make and how they relate is totally different. I think the, the thought process has somehow changed. So we, we completely need to involve both young men and women in terms of what exactly would work for them right now. Because if, if I tell, if, if, if I tell uh, uh, let's say, James there, uh, uh, you need to respect women and blah blah blah. You know, may, may just be listening and they know. Ah. See, women know and men know. Us is just mashing and moving on. Yeah. Think, you know, I can treat you the way I want. There is no strings attached. There is no humane. There is no humane. There's something called friends with benefit. We just sleep and go. We are friends and benefiting each other. No strings attached. I think that's where we are losing it. People mm -hmm. forget that we are human and yes. we have feelings. We are social. Yeah. Beings. So. Yeah, are, yeah. yeah. That application of looking at things with uh, human eye, or that kind of uh, you know just understanding that this other person is also a human being, for both sides, it's something that we really need to relearn how to look at it with the current situation. Mm -hmm. Like you've just mentioned something about. Uh, 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 let's say contraceptives and these and these other issues. We can we can you know pregnancies are going so hard. Yes. And this means there is there is a problem with how our young people, teenagers, are relating to each other. Because classically speaking or technically speaking, that's a lot of defining. Yeah, it is. Yeah, because anyone under eighteen, it's against the law to do this. Yeah. But when we sit down and keep saying that you can do this and you can do this, then see the amount uh, the number of wababa. Bubbles. Hey, Bubbles. Bankos. Yeah. Hello, Bubbles. <laughs> Sending my regards. Bubbles, you can you honor Tafadali? No, Bubbles. You know, up there, up there, it's coated it's with, with good IG photo and yeah. stuff like that. Some, some Bansa, some Diani, but that is, that is gender based violence. You know, it's just yeah. at, this at, plane, its core, yeah. at its core. It is. What we are doing is we have totally lost our moral. We have sugar-coated violence. Yeah, we have sugar and made it look nice. We have... We have sugar-coated GBV. Yes. You know. we, have, we have given it golden clothes. Yeah, now... The tiara yeah, it's it's yeah. We put it on top there and we're like, yes, that's, that's our target. That's and because I have money and I can call a chick and pay a flight to Mombasa, then she comes and she does what I want, including Arnold and these other things that she doesn't want. And if she does mistake me to get coffee because I have the money, but because and, and I feature yeah. and I feature an IG in a good life. We are just sugar right. into silence. Yeah. You know. So the problem is, is is much, much worse and we need to figure out. We cannot address it like no, a single yeah. thing. It has a lot of other issues yeah. surrounding it. I love to be popularize, you know. What is Babas? When Baba Yanani Baba Milan. Mean Baba Milan. Mean Baba Milan. My cinematography in Babas. So my respect. Yeah. So you see, and the, and the problem of uh, that kind of uh, relationship where we have is we do not have respectful relationships, where you know. Uh, unfortunately, again, at, at the receiving end is mostly girls. Yeah. Even with empowerment, at the receiving end is a man who is in a position of power is more likely to abuse that power and make. You know, if you do something that is, you do not consent to, yeah. for whatever reason, then then that is that is GBV. But unfortunately, it brings other issues. So we are constantly in a cycle of issue A, issue B, issue C. To Z, and then if back to A. Yeah, if you are not in a toxic relationship. Where you are being physically and sexually abused, you're then you are exposed to HIV. Oh, Lord. You see? Yes. If, again, being exposed to HIV may also expose you to unplanned for pregnancy and teenage pregnancy. So it, it's a whole cycle and other is yes. So we are constantly revolving around, revolving around this thing. We an are, issue. We're not dealing with it, we're just touching part of it yeah, and yeah, yeah. Of it. Yeah. touching and running. Yeah. yeah, but at the core of it is, is gender related. And the core of it, we are making it a prize to be won by Yes, everyone. yes. So, guys, as you take this commercial break, we will be right back and we will just talk about 
what G GVRC has done for the 16 days of activism. And as we take a break, just go back, follow our page on YouTube, on Instagram, on Facebook, and sending my love, all guys. I hope I'll co-abused. We'll be right back. Quarry Busana, guys, we are back here at Long Road at the GBRC Center. And Mrs. Shanghai, Mona Nangalia. But you know, I had a tongue twister today. I was telling my producer today, I was telling him, Apa Leoni Tangoa. GBRC, GB, gender best brand, GBV. And we still have. Tuliko da sawa nini ngine? Uwa sema 16 days of activism and zero tolerance to GB. Why, meaning Kiku, my friend, and you better name Luya. I have to miss. I made two of us, so I have to keep on checking. So, but we're back, and I just want to address this question to me. We know it is. I want to address this question to James. Tell us, we have had the 16 days of activism. Hey, one shot, the 16 days of activism. <laughs> And I want to know how GVFC is actually, what what are you doing? What is your participation in this, um, like, it's it's a term, or it's like a duration of time? A, a, a season, a I, season. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what What is happening at this particular time is just the world taking a pause and deciding we're going to take time mm -hmm. to actually acknowledge that GBV is there and their efforts and their, uh, this extra amount of, um, sight or attention to be given towards GBV. For us, it's our daily job. It's, our daily, uh, it's the reason why I come to the office, it's the reason why he is a team player, that particular, is, is what we are doing. But this particular season is just um, the rest of the world deciding, by the way, it's true, we want to recognize the efforts that are going there. So for us, uh, the things that we have been doing, we keep on, we have kept on doing it, providing uh, free medical services to any survivor of gender-based violence who comes to our facility. We provide psychosocial support that is uh, giving our survivors um, spaces uh, where they can heal with other individuals, that is support groups. We have provided legal uh, representation for all the survivors who would want to take it towards uh, yeah, access and justice. Mm -hmm. We have uh, sensitized, uh, now moving now towards the programmatic side, the emphasis, I believe, what uh, our um, activities have leaned towards, especially in this season, is changing the narrative when it comes to men. The, uh, and we've had this discussion here to Mongea to Kasema that the story out there is that men are only perpetrators, only. But we uh, understand that we have men who have gone through gender based violence, we have men who have been on the receiving end of GBV. So our focus has been um, mainly, even as we do other things, mainly to change this story. Getting uh, men to talk and to open, giving them a, a platform to do that. So in, uh, through a project that we call Project Accelerate, that we are partnering with uh, an organization called, uh, two organizations, that is Population Services Kenya and Population Services uh, International, we have had programs running, uh, again, you said for us to focus on this thing, uh, 16 days of activism, programs of engaging men in conversations, talking to them about uh, what gender-based violence is, identify as what their role uh, is in not only um, stopping it at their uh, home state or at their circle of influence, but spreading this information, telling other people, or, or being uh, vocal and open, yeah. uh, and open against gender-based violence. So we've had uh, sensitization forums in West Pokot, in Kuala, in Kilifi, in Samburu, in Marsabit, and uh, in Garissa. So we, those six counties and uh, seven others that are under our uh, program, have a high burden of gender-based violence. So as uh, Chege, the team player, had uh, mentioned, yeah, yeah, I just had to like, <laughs> put the title. I see what it did. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> so as he had mentioned that we cannot just focus our attention on the uh, the way the narrative has been that women men have a role in it because uh, ideally it should be men and women against the problem not men yeah, against women true. or women yeah. against men so it's both of us as, as men and as women against the problem that is gender-based violence 
So uh, as we've done that, we've censored around more than 180 men have sat down in forums, and obviously it's segregated by age, so that because we understand that there are things that are are dealt with. There's a way, as yeah. uh, I've mentioned, Vijana what are in a certain way, and there's a role that they do. We have influencers. Um, men who have aged enough to have a say in, in the society, having a conversation with them and what is their role in that specific position that they're in. Um, beyond that, we've had uh, something we call a survivor's day, where we bring in survivors who have gone through gender based violence, a select of them, so that we, they can share their stories with our donors and our partners, even with, with each other, getting to sensitize. We celebrated that in uh, Nakuru and also here in Nairobi. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I like, very yeah. nice. And of course, yeah. there's, there's so much going on on our social media platforms. Mm -hmm. so if you check uh, Gender Violence Recovery Center on Facebook, at GVRC Kenya on Twitter, then uh, GVRC? At GVRC Kenya on, on Instagram, Instagram, and Instagram. also at GVRC Kenya on uh, uh, YouTube. On YouTube, yeah. Mm -hmm. By there, you can also follow us. I'm going to follow you. I'm going to follow you. I'm going to follow you. Instant. I'm going to follow you. 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 GVRC Kenya. Mm. So th there's a lot of that has been happening there as well. Yeah. 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 And uh, if uh, we are reaching out to a lot of people, and uh, we are having engagements also online during the 16 days. In fact, I think uh, we we've, we've colored our 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 logo. Is it orange? Orange. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's it. Yeah. We've See guys, the orange. this is their page. Just follow. Yeah. And learn. Facebook, Instagram, and people are reaching us through our DMs. Yeah. So we are having heightened uh, discussions during 16 days on social media, mm -hmm. and uh, we also have a hotline mm -hmm. number that uh, I think we are also popularizing it during yeah. this time. Yeah, toll free number. Yeah, toll free. Well, one one beautiful thing about it is that it's toll free. That mm -hmm. uh, you don't need any credit you know, on your phone to do it. It will not consume the already the credit that yeah. you already have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, you can just uh, call the number. The number is zero eight hundred seven two zero five six five. 0800 for our Android friends. Um, 0800 Sufuri Mianane 720 Sabambili Sufuri 720 Sabambili Sufuri 565 Tano Sita Tano. Yes. Yeah, I think it's Twitter. Yes, yeah. we will highlight it as I conclude my video. So it's quite a pleasure. I relax. Ni to all free to have a community. I want to be creating it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, and also, um, I think. Uh, just building on to that conversation, uh, what we're doing on social media, we have posts that spark conversations. Um, what is the role of religion? What is the role as a as a parent in your uh, in the space of your children? What is your role in not only um, taking an initiative to talk about it, yeah. but actually walking the talk? Can you are you able to? Uh, share your particular finances or resources that you have mm -hmm. to aid this fight against the end of this world. So as you look at it, the idea is to not only read and learn, but to share and be able to now respond to it. It's a call to action for us. And uh, just uh, remember something else. We, we have also been part of, uh, we were uh, part of celebrations, the initial, the launch of a particular system mm -hmm. of activism in, in um, that was the national launch. Yeah, in uh, Bungwong. You have talked about how you have introduced uh, self groups for people to speak about it, yeah. but highlight measures that JVRC has put in place. What do you do? How do you respond to a call on gender based violence? Yeah, a call. Yes, um, I call. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Chess. I'm an eater doggy. So how do you respond to this call that someone has been um, abused, gender based violence, and it is so severe? Give me your response protocol. Because um, as an organization, I think you have a systematic way of how you deal with it. Yeah, no, it's true. Now you have asked him the question he likes to ask. Ah. He's going to, he likes the survivor centered. Very busy thing. <laughs> <laughs> Voila, magic. I, I'm a I'm a cause of mention, no pressure. And a focus on no pressure. No pressure. No pressure. No pressure. No pressure. No 
But um, as he's mentioned something called the survivor-centered approach, and that is what we implement mm -hmm. in every single intervention that we have at Gender Violence Recovery Center. So um, when we look at the, because there are different platforms on how you can reach out to us. Mm -hmm. You can come directly to the hospital, and uh, I'd like to start with that first, and then now we move towards mm -hmm. the, the over-the-call mm -hmm. uh, kind of approach. So the first thing you will come, as you present your case to the uh, reception, you'll be directed to our offices. We have rooms which are specifically designed to make you feel comfortable, and we have counselors who have been trained to deal with um, any uh, psychological first aid that you may need at that particular moment. So you'll find a counselor there, you will have an opportunity to express yourself, first of all, um, deal with the initial shock of any form of gender violence that you've experienced. So after that, we, as the counselor uh, gives in the particular interventions that are available, mm -hmm. since we understand that the, the survivor is at the core, they're the ones to decide what is going to happen to me. If I decide that I'm, oh, we're only going to take um, medical, we're going to focus on the medical side of it, you get treatment and you'll be allowed to leave. But it is important, and that is uh, what our uh, counselors understand, to give them the options, mm -hmm. that there is the option of taking access to justice. Absolutely. There is the option of uh, actually joining a group of uh, survivors who have gone through the same uh, type of uh, gender-based violence that you've gone through and taking that journey together of, of healing uh, together with them. So first, you will receive the counseling that you need, psychological mm -hmm. uh, support, and then second, you will be given free medical treatment, uh, depending again on uh, the type of general experience that you've gone through. If it is physical, there are protocols that are set in place for that. Uh, medication and, and whatever examination that you're going to get. If it is sexual, there's that. Uh, that uh, will be recommended by, again, our, our trained medical personnel. So we have a counselor, we have now the medical practitioners uh, that have been trained on that and they understand the protocols that are there. So after that, you will uh, be Followed up. I don't know. And yes, it may be phrased by. There will be a follow up on that. Will be called to be asked um, how your progress is. Kizungu, kizungu ilikuja na itarudi tu. You will be followed up on the progress of your healing. And the beauty about this is that any psychosocial support that is there is valid in a lifetime. We understand that there is no limit yeah. when it comes to the time frame for healing. Uh, Some. Uh, because of one or two uh, reasons may get to a point of uh, healing at, after one month. Some may take 10 years. Mm -hmm. And that is okay. We are unique as human beings in that aspect. Um, when it comes to a call, mm -hmm. so first of all, you will uh, always find someone on the line. Two, you will always um, be given the opportunity to speak as long as you want. Because again, we want to offer the best services for you as an individual, not just what we would recommend. Mm -hmm. So we'll be given time. If it's something that um, is as urgent as is needed, there will, there's an allocation for rescues. If, it, if someone is in danger, there's an allocation for directions towards the closest uh, health center. And we can link you up to not just our GVRC uh, facilities, but facilities that we have um, had an opportunity to work with. And that cuts across. So if, if, uh, mainly the 13 counties that we are working in, we have quite a, a huge uh, number of facilities that we are working in. And we've worked again beyond just the 13 that we are working in, in this project accelerate. So once you get that particular help, um, you will be directed and there will be a follow up on that. What, how did you get these particular services? Are you able to come now after you've um, dealt with the emergency? Are you able to come to the office so that you can go through counseling? And it is completely free. It is. It is completely yeah. free. You actually Bumuri. get to get these two handsome men here and they'll talk to you. Yeah. And some we are talking. And maybe also to add uh, uh, what James has explained is uh, we also have uh, because of the different needs, you know, there is there is if you're going through something, uh, it, you tend to recover more quickly if you get to know that ah it's not. It's not just I'm me. Not the only one who uh, I have. Uh, I have uh, certain people that we share. You it's know, common problem. Common problem. So we have support groups. We have support groups for adult women, yeah. uh, survivors of rape, 
survivors of physical violence. Mm -hmm. We have a support group for children who've been abused. We have a support group for the caregivers who care for these children. Yeah. We have support group for because men. of the unique needs men for men for men. So even men can feel safe. Yeah. Then we have support groups for teenagers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Teenagers, teenagers. Teenagers who, uh, so we provide all these things, and like you said, depending on your need. According to our can be last a year, two years. Yeah, yeah. So that is additional uh, services that uh, we do offer in terms of uh, 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 what we are doing. You said the mechanisms in place. Yeah. But also we are not just treating. We don't want only to treat. We generate very good uh, data. Not good in terms of that balance is good, mm -hmm. but we try to make our data make sense. I, I don't think there is another place not blowing on trumpet in, in East Africa that has data. Ah, okay. Like I'm not data. Not really. I'm not data. Karibu, Karibu, I'm not trumpet. Karibu. So <laughs> we also share this to people doing this to people designing programs. So we want to make sure that this, this you know, this number of actual people. This, yeah. this is an actual gun, an actual man, an actual man. You know, so we want to make this data make sense. So uh, we use our data to influence advocacy processes. You see key legislations on GBV, like the Sexual Offences Act, people who develop the protection against domestic violence. Act. You need evidence. Yeah. But then we want to use our data to make positive influence. That is one thing we do. So that people can take action. So that policies can be put in place. So that laws can be legislated on the issues of GBV. We also uh, give people doing research so that whoever is going to implement is evidence based. So we use our data also to, to researchers who are designing and also yeah. making but key important. They don't end up making their own assumptions. Yes. Yeah. So that is also one thing that we do. And again, we are also now in the space of we can't keep treating and uh, using data to influence. We are also in the space of prevention. So our prevention model is, is very wide, but we work with children in an adult school, we work with youth, we work with men, we work with women. And when I say men, I mean uh, adolescents, adult men, elderly yeah, men. When I say women, I mean again the same. So we have very specific programs in terms of just strengthening that aspect. Uh, that also advises, you know, what we do in terms of behavior change. And we understand it's a process. And learning something is very difficult. Yeah. So easy start on belly. Yeah, you know, when people who are very violent, people, they, they were just totally bad news. But right now, we've deconstructed that. And they are our active champions. Sometimes you don't need to say anything, they just need to speak that it actually works. So that is what we are, in addition to what James are saying, that we are, we are doing. In That's really nice when yeah. you relation guys and the fact that you can de de uh, you can dismantle someone's habit to teach you know they say you cannot teach an old dog new tricks but you can teach an old dog how to conquer their old tricks yeah so the, the, the if the GBRC is in a position to actually change somebody I guess you guys are actually the best champions we are championing for you <laughs> in between the lines okay in between the lines so yeah. guys we will be right back to conclude this episode um <laughs> and before that by the way you can remember when you made a t-shirt man you can miss out what i'm on i'm on money and my aunties and my uncles i really have a nice t-shirt here and it's available for you everybody goes for 800 go and uh it's basically just a way to support my show and my business mm -hmm. a girl's gonna make hustle okay and um we'll be right back but before oh no as we come back make sure you just subscribe follow jvlc across all social medias follow my social media handles and so now you can conclude no i too quickly Busana guys and I am here back at GVRC. Always I'm here. He has Jato Kasya Banduka Niko Hapa Hapa. And as we conclude guys, I just want to tell you this. Gender best violence as I have learned today is not about you hitting me. It's about how you address me. It's about my environment. It can be toxic. So please please put your toxic environment. No go. I am literally kidding, but just, <laughs> just 
know this. Mm. I have learned so much today at this center. And the most part about it, I have learned that I have to have a say. Con with no consent, you're abusing me. So it is just like that. Akuna blenta kushuga kwatia, honey. With no consent, that guy is abusing you. With no consent, that Baba is abusing you. So stop. Just retract your steps, go back. Respect yourself to an, exp an extent of you say no. Let no be no. Let no be no. And I uh, change. No, ni no, by the way. Okay, go ni no, ni no. Imeisha, imeisha. Do not hit a woman because she said no, because she's weak. Because at the end of the day, karma is whatever. It's, she's a wild animal and she can never be caged, okay? I don't want to say the other version. <laughs> but know this. Whatever you give is what you receive, okay? And uh, I'm just going to ask my very cute, handsome men. We left up a a lunch now, so to their wives, I'm very sorry. <laughs> to their husbands, I'm very sorry, but we just have to have lunch. Yeah. So to Chess, yeah. because you thank you so much for inviting me to this center. He's actually the host who asked me to come. I want even hot. <laughs> and uh, I'm really grateful for, uh, on behalf of the fireplace, my director, Sanguti. Thank you so much for giving me this chance. Thank you so much for linking us. Asante sana kukutukaribisha JBRC, tulipotea na uba bati tulifika. But you see what we're grateful. I just want you to look at that camera for two minutes and I want you to talk to my community out there. I want you to give them the highlights of what they do or what to expect after a gender based violence. What should they do? Uh, thank you very much. Two minutes. Huh? It starts <laughs> and the two minutes starts now. Starts now. Uh, thank you. My two minutes of being famous uh, start now. Uh, thank you, Fireplace. Thank you, Daphne, Sanguti, and uh, our staff. You should mention, mention Sanguti. I told you, and of course, our staff. Actually, at this time of the day, because I'm not a good packet, packet, maua, na marashi. Majo walu ya tuni mbanga, tuni mbanga jiriwe. You cannot start with a statement. <laughs> and then, of course, I could say that. You know, it's not shimo, which is done. Yeah, so uh, uh, for me, what I'd like to say is uh, uh, just to remind people that gender based violence exists because of three things people in position of power tend to abuse power, then the existing inequalities between men and and also lack of respect for human rights. So I'd like you to take a reflection. Don't think of gender-based violence being out there. Start with a self-internal reflection. How are you using the power that you have, regardless of whether you're a man or a woman? Then what is your role in promotion of gender equality? Forget about being a man, being a woman. Look at yourself as a human being, first of all, so that you're able to see that, you know, you're able to address this. Then what do you need? For example, just by virtue of being a man to be able to, you know, promote a peaceful coexistence. And what can you do to that person who is female? You know, just to promote them and be able, you know, for them to achieve the best they can and also to promote a peaceful coexistence. And lastly is the issue of please respect other people as human beings. Everybody has got rights. Nobody is supposed to be abused. Huh? Regardless of the myths and misconceptions out there. Uh, human, you know, being a human being, you have certain inherent rights that you should be able to enjoy. Otherwise, passing through this world would, would have no meaning at all. So ensure that even if you're exercising your right, then you are not curtailing the other person's freedom, or you are not curtailing them the ability to, you know, what they're entitled to, to enjoy their rights and freedoms. And uh, from what I've seen since 2020 up to now. I think there is a disconnect. If you are out there and you're watching us and you are a parent, then you, we, truth be said, we need to up our game. Yeah, when it comes, there is a very big disconnect. We've left our children to learn from the world, to learn from the internet. We are not playing an active role. It's like. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so, to me, I internet. Uh, the art is very hard. Very uh, hard. Yeah, so our, uh, we need uh, we need to take a very uh, we need to be hold held accountable. Yeah. As a parent, you need to be held accountable. 
you need to know everything about your child. Talk to them, create that friendly environment. If your child is not a friend to you, who do you think they are going to befriend? How sure are you that the person they are befriending and getting inform information from is the right person? A lot of things have gone wrong, but it's time to go back to the basics. To mm -hmm. go very fast in the dunya, to learn to work, to drop the basics that used to work. We need to go back to the basics. What was working then is parents who are responsible. Let's let's take responsibility. Be a friend to your child, you know. Uh, be a friend. Open up. Listen to them. Get to help them through the process of life. Thank we you. have to do life together. And uh, I hope. And lastly, as I finish, my last word in short is: Don't suffer in silence. If you are going through a lot, whether you are a man, a woman, reach out to us. We, uh, we, yeah, we gave out our number 0800-725-65. Slide in our DM. You know, reach out. Reach out. Yes. Make sure. But we just see our judge. Make sure. Make sure you have <laughs> spoken to us. Eh? Because at the end of the day, we are all, we are all human beings. We can do this together. And I invite you to chat for your mind for the time that you are there. And I hope that uh, uh, you'll catch uh, you'll continue watching the show. Karim, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you.